Hey my friend, welcome to my comparison video between the five delay pedals you can get from Strymon. So if you landed on this video, it probably means that you're interested in getting a Strymon delay, but you're probably overwhelmed by all the options. Maybe you're asking yourself, what are the differences? Which one should I get? Can one pedal replicate another? So I will try to answer all of these questions in this video. There is a lot to talk about. I will try to be as concise as possible. So first of all, I have to say that all of these pedals have stereo outs, so that can be all plugged in stereo, but for this demo, they are plugged in mono. Why? Because the smaller pedals uh, have one input only. So I would have to use three breakout cables to plug everything in stereo, and I wanted to keep my signal path as simple as possible for this demo. So let's start by comparing uh, the delay types of each pedal. So the Brigadier is an analog delay, the El Capistan is a tape delay, the Dig is a digital delay, the timeline is all of that plus more, it has 12 delay types. And the Volante is a tape delay, uh, the same thing as the El Capistan, but just a bit different. So what I have to say though, is that those are all digital pedals. There will be a lot of uh, foot pointing in this video. They, they are all digital pedals, they are just emulating other types of delays. So for example, the Brigadier is a digital delay emulating an analog delay. The El Capistan is a digital delay emulating tape. You get it? So one of the bad things is that you don't get, for example, with the Brigadier, you don't get the true sound of an analog pedal. But the good things is that you have more capabilities. For example, the Brigadier can go up to five second delays, which would be impossible with a true analog pedal. But if you like the sound of Strymon, you don't, you should not care about if the pedals are digital or analog. It's just about liking the sounds, right? So I, uh, the other noteworthy difference is uh, the loopers. So the El Capistan, the Timeline and the Volante have loopers built into them and the Dig and the Brigadiers uh, don't have them. So if it's something important to you, you should consider it. And uh, the El Capistan has up to 20 seconds of looper, the, El uh, the timeline 30 seconds, and the Volante up to 64 seconds if you uh, put the speed at half, or if you don't, it's less. So let's play with each pedal, and I'm going to talk about what makes the, each pedal unique and what are, what are the strengths of each pedal. Let's start with the Brigadier. here. If you choose the Brigadier, is that you want dirtier delay sounds. So with the bucket loss knob, you can introduce a bit of drive and a bit of noise on your repeats. You hear the little distortion and noise. I do not have faulty cables, it's just the bucket loss it has a maximum, so you can have pretty dirty delays. Uh, people really like the Brigadier as an always on delay. Of course, if you do not want any noise on it, you just have to back off on the bucket loss. And you have cleaner, warmer repeats. So if I back up on the mix a bit too, it can be an always on delay. <laughs> It sits really well under your tone. What I really like about it too is that it has, like I said, five seconds delay, which is, you don't see that with analog delays. So uh, if I put the, the, the time as long, you can do some pretty cool things with it. Lo-fi sounds, so cool. So 
So it can act almost as a looper. It's just five seconds, but you can have a lot of fun with it. So th these are the strengths of the Brigadier to me. Now to the El Capistan. The strength of the El Capistan is if you like worn out sounds and I find that it has a really nostalgic quality to it. There are a lot of imperfections like a tape that is old with this pedal so it's really great for that. Listen to the single repeat. It's like it's old. Plus it can get really warm with the tape age knob which I love. This is a warmth that you do not find in the Volante, we'll get to it in a minute. But what I really like, the strength of the Strymon El Capistan for me is its looper, it's exquisite, it's really, really nice. So um, you have to choose the tape head single in the mode C to have this sound on sound looper. And then you can loop whatever you want. And you can really mess up with the sound. And make it broken. You can even pitch shift it. So if you dig that kind of sound, you should definitely get an El Capistan pedal. Which brings me to the dig. I know it was bad. But the dig is for more traditional delay sounds. They are very clean. They are going to pierce through the mix. And you can blend both delays because I haven't said it, but this is the only small delay pedal that has two separate delays in the same box. So it's a dual delay. You can blend both delays to create textures with it. But for now, I'm just going to demonstrate one delay. So it sounds clean like this. You could even um, uh, not put some modulation if you want something really, really clean. Super, super clean. And what's really nice is that you have the second mix and you can blend it and second delay. Now you have a world of possibilities to make both delays collide between each other. Ah, it's beautiful, isn't it? So I think that the Dig is a better pedal if you do not care about the big ones, if you do not care about presets also, but you want a very pristine, clean studio delay that's going to cut through the mix. So if you, I, especially for worship players or something like that, if you want to play ambient music with a band at your church and you want really to pierce through the mix, this is going to help a lot and you can create awesome sounding soundscape pretty easily with this pedal. So I love it for this. Then the big beast, the timeline. So now first thing to say with the timeline is that it has up to 200 presets. You can go up to bank 99 like you can see here and you have A and B. So basically you have up to 200 presets, which is more than enough. I, I hope you won't need more than that. So if you play live, uh, presets can be good for you because you don't have to tweak your sound each time. You just one click and boom, you have your sound and it's done. And especially if you want to be more creative with your delays because you have many more delay types on the Strymon timeline. Uh, at the end of the video, I will compare the timeline to the other individual pedals to see if we can replicate them well, because that's a question that you most probably have also. 
But first of all, let's go through some creative sounds that none of these other pedals can do. Uh, you could blend octaves in your delays. You could add a tremolo to the repeats. You could have lo-fi sounds, like a bit crusher. You could have reverse delays. could get pretty creative with the timeline. It has so many possibilities that the other pedals do not, but at the same time, it's the pedal that costs the most out of the five pedals. If you choose the timeline, you have to be comfortable with tweaking because you have to go into the global settings and some settings are not shown on the knob so you have to push some knobs and go through that so you definitely have to work more on your sound if you pick up the timeline but having presets is also really really good and like i said i will compare the timeline to individual pedals at the end but now let's go to the volante which is also a tape echo, so it has a lot of similarities with the El Capistan, but there are some key differences. First of all, you have more rhythmic possibilities because you can choose which heads are going to be engaged and the feedback of the heads and the spacing of the heads. So it's like limitless possibilities. So just with one head activated, it sounds like this. So once again, it's that worn out sound that we really like, but now we have more uh, things that we can do. If I push some heads, it can sound like this. You can go crazy with it and it's also very easy to create soundscapes with the combination of heads, feedback and the spacing knob. Uh, what is really nice with this pedal is that it's in a bigger format so you have all the knobs available here. What I haven't said about the small boxes is that they have secondary functions so you press both switches at the same time and basically all of the knobs become something else. So all of those small pedals basically have 10 knobs to them. With the El Capistan, you can tweak the tape crinkle, the bias, the low end contour, you can add spring reverb. With the Brigadier, you can work on the tone of the repeats. With the Dig, you can work on the subdivisions, uh, not the subdivisions, but how each delay interact with each other. You can have a ping pong mode, serial, parallel. You can do many things with the secondary functions, but it's more memorizing. You need to know what are the knobs doing when you press both switches. Switches. But with the Volante, you still have secondary functions, but they are less used. So you see everything that you need. The spring reverb is on there. Uh, the, the wear knob is there. So you don't need the low cut is there. So you don't need to press for secondary functions more often. And especially you have a bit of presets. It's a lot less than a timeline, but it's a great addition because with the small pedals, if you want to have presets, you have to buy a different uh, preset box, a favorite switch, and it's just one preset. So it's not a lot. So, um, what is great also with the Volante is that you have more time with the looper, like I said. So the the big difference for me is that if you push the wear in a mechanics knob to uh, their maximum, this is not as warm as the El Capistan. <laughs> And 
And if I push the El Capitan to its limit... Let's hear only the delays. With the El Capistan, you can go really further with that kind of worn out, nostalgic, broken sound. The Volante is really good too. But it's not as close as, as this monster of crushing and warmth of the delays. So, like I said, the only thing I want to cover at the end is uh, is the timeline capable of copying exactly all of the small pedals here? Because yes, it costs more than the, the individual pedals, but if it can replicate exactly those ones, this is worth it to get the big box, right? What I think is that it's a 90% solution. Maybe to some it's gonna be a 95% solution. So I think it gets 90% of the way there to replicate the other pedals. Of course, the individual pedal will have a little bit more tweaking to the sound and more its own flavor. But I think this timeline is really, really not far to replicate them. So um, my favorite pedal and the one I have since the most uh, time is the El Capistan. So I made a patch on the timeline to really replicate that. So it sounds like this. <laughs> And then on the El Capistan. You see, there's a bit more depth in the El Capistan, but I think it's pretty close. Let's try something else. Let's try the D bucket on the timeline, which would replicate the Brigadier as an analog delay. So it's pretty close, right? And then the digital delay. Let's hear the timeline. And the dig. see once again a little bit more depth with the dig but I haven't tweaked a lot so if you tweak more the timeline you can get pretty close it's 90 95 percent solution if you really like tiny small details maybe you should get a smaller pedal like this but if the 90 percent solution is great for you then you should get the timeline because it allows for more so now if I can just wrap up this which pedals should you choose according to your needs? You should choose the Brigadier if you want an always on delay that is going to be super warm and a bit dirty and it, that's going to sit very well under your tone and you like that you have five seconds delays that you can go into lo-fi territories with it. If you want the Al Capistan, it's because you like broken up delays uh, that are vintage, nostalgic, and you like that the looper, you can really crush the sound with it and that it's super, super warm with the tape age. You do not care about having presets and you do not care about the length of the looper. The dig, you want it if you want pristine, clean delays that are going to cut through the mix and you want to make uh, beautiful sounding soundscapes by blending two delays together. And once again, you do not really care about 
presets with this pedal. If you want a timeline, you want to be creative, you want sounds out of the box, um, you want to incorporate reverse sounds and octaves and tremolos and filters and lo-fi sounds and bit crushers, you want also some uh, standard delays too that are going to sound good. Maybe you want presets because you are playing live and you like that the most. Uh, I also haven't talked about MIDI capabilities, which is good with this pedal too. And you want the Volante if you like tape delays, but you would want a longer time to record on the looper. And uh, you want more rhythmic possibilities with the spacing and the heads and the feedbacks that it allows. And maybe you don't really like to tweak in the secondary functions and memorize knobs. Everything is in front of your eyes. And also you have a bit of presets, up to eight presets. So it's a compromise between having two hundreds and one only. So that's pretty much it as far as its differences. I could have compared the pedals more, I could have gone a lot more in depth, but I think I talked enough and I think that uh, it's enough for today. So if there are some things that I haven't covered in this video that you wanted to know, ask me in the comment section, I will do my best to answer your questions. And if you liked uh, the chords that I've played, I have a gift for you before you leave. I have a free course on ambient guitar chords on my website. You can click on the first link in the description box and it's a four part uh, video course that goes through the most um, popular ambient guitar chords like, like what I've played in this video. And I teach about many different kind of shapes. I teach about uh, harmonizing this. So this is my gift to you. Go click on the first thing in the description box and sign up for my free course. This is my pleasure. So if you are new here and you like my content, you can subscribe to my channel because I have a lot coming every week. Uh, guitar lessons on cool chords and voicings original ambient guitar songs. I have pedal board tips to help you set up your pedals to make songs, so lots of great stuff. And also you have to push the notification bell after you have subscribed to make sure that uh, you will be notified because there are so many videos on YouTube, mine will get lost in that sea, so make sure you get notified about my videos. Woof! That was a lot. I hope you have enjoyed. So thank you. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, au revoir.